So I think question five is something like convert two and a half tons to pounds. Spelling errors here. Okay. So um, first step would be 2.5 tons over one. That's just putting down what I'm going to convert, putting it over one. Okay, Lee, you want to jump in with your question? See, the, you answered it because I didn't know how to do the two and a half. Ah, okay, right. Yeah, I mean, I would convert it to a decimal. You can write it as a mixed number, but that just brings in other problems in terms of how do I multiply mixed numbers. So two and a half equals 2.5, then that's going to be easier for most people to deal with. Okay, that was the question. Cool. So, okay, I got about, now I've got four people who sent me stuff. Yep, see a lot of good, good stuff out there, so that's good. So, once you kind of get that part of it, let's just briefly go back to these notes. Write down what we want to convert, make it a fraction. Pick out the identity ratio. So, more on step two. Where things get complicated is there's not a direct link between what we have and what we want. And again, Google kind of obviates this whole thing, but in terms of doing something in class on paper to show the process of getting something accomplished, um, you want to be able to kind of map out, I'm going to start here and I'm going to get to here. So now that's what I want to talk about next. And that really moves us to multi-step conversions. Okay, so I'm going to put an X next to that one because I've seen a lot of good work already on simple conversions. So as we move to multi-step conversions, Basically, we're going to do something like convert two and a half tons to ounces or to kilograms or something like that. And if you look at your conversion sheet, you'll see that I don't have a conversion from tons to ounces. I have a conversion from tons to pounds and I have a conversion from pounds to ounces. And that's what I mean by multi-step. You're going to have to put those two steps together in order to get there. Now, you could basically do this process twice. But what I want to show you is that you can also just add in another fraction. And I guess I should have brought this up when we were talking about fraction operations. But basically, if I do... 3 sevenths times 7 elevenths, and then multiply that by 1 half, I don't need to stop the process, execute the first part, and then execute the second part. I can just multiply across because everything is going to end up coming out in the wash. 3 times 7 times 1 is 21, and 7 times 11 times 2 is 154. Again, I had an opportunity to do some simplification there. It would have made my life easier. But the point is that you can literally just multiply all the way across. And this means, this is why the fraction notation and method of converting is so powerful, that you can do as many of these as you want. You can set up five conversions, right? And there's going to be problems where you may need that many conversion factors to get from where you are to where you want to be. So let's think about this particular problem that I posed. We've already started the first part of it, 2.5 tons over one. That's setting up what I want to convert. The next one is going to be the one you've already done, which is you've got a tons to pounds conversion. So what's the numbers that go in front of the pounds and the tons? Two thousand pounds over one one ton. Right, so I put 2,000 in front here, and I put one in front here. And then I continue the process. So I'm not going to stop and calculate this. I do know 
and I can cross out the tons here and here if it helps me. All I've got now is pounds to worry about. But what's the next thing I'm going to put in as I want to convert my pounds into ounces? Where do pounds go and where do ounces go? Pounds go on the bottom, ounces yes. on the top. Very good. And again, I'm, I'm leading it in the way that I would actually do it, which is that I write the units and then I put the numbers. So as I look back at my formula sheet, what number should then go in front of ounces and what number should go in front of pounds? One pound over 16 ounces. Or okay, 16 I'll... ounces over one pound. Exactly. I've already put my units in place. So I'm putting my 16 here and I'm putting my one here. Right. And again, I can use that cross out to help me see that I physically lined up diagonally the units that I wanted to get rid of. So I have accomplished what I set out to, which is to get rid of tons and then get rid of pounds. And so then I just have to do the math. 2.5 times 2,000 times 16. And on the bottom, one times one times one is one. So this is gonna be 80,000 ounces. So that's the answer to this question. So that's an example of a multi-step process. Now, the hard part of a multi-step process is that you have to build the, the, 